Welcome to the Bellator 214 call, and I'll turn it over to Danny Brunner. Thank you, operator, and thank you all to the media for joining us today on today's Bellator 214 conference call, where we will hear from Bellator light heavyweight champion Ryan Bader, Fedor Emelianenko, Jake Hager, and J.W. Kaiser. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Uh, we are just 11 days out from the Heavyweight World Grand Prix finale now as it all goes down Saturday, January 26th at the Forum in Los Angeles. The event airs live and free on the Paramount Network and is streaming on DAZN. With that, we can open it up for the first question. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad, that star and the number 1. Our first question comes from the line of Steve Juan with MMA Mania. Thank you, Operator. I have a question for each fighter on the line, and I'd like to start with Jake Hager. You had a very successful career at the University of Oklahoma before you got into professional wrestling, and now, 13 years later, you're entering the world of mixed martial arts. Why is now the time for you to compete in MMA? Uh, thank you for asking me uh, that. Um, I think right now, if you look at MMA, it's at a peak uh, popularity and with my background in professional wrestling it is also at its height of popularity even high our age is the uh, the 1980s so i think for me as an athlete as a as a sports brand it makes sense to try to cross over into another industry because it's only going to make me a better pro wrestler and being a pro wrestler is only going to make me a better mma fighter very good and to your opponent, J.W. Kaiser, how do you feel about Jake entering into the world of mixed martial arts and your fight with him at Bellator 214? First off, I want to say thanks to uh, uh, Steve Coker, um, um, Bellator MMA. I want to say thanks to Jake Hager, too, for, for uh, taking the fight. Um, it's a huge opportunity for me. Uh, as far as answering the question goes, I think it's an awesome thing. Um, man, the more popularity we can bring to MMA is, is, is the better and the higher names. I mean, the, the, the bigger, the bigger names, the bigger athletes we can get involved in the sport just keeps it growing. Um, I, I, I love Jake. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Mr. Hager. You know, I can't wait to get in the off ground with him and, uh, bang it out. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've watched him wrestle. I, you know, I, I, uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be a part of such a such a big event, and, and to be a part of his debut as a as a uh, MMA fighter too. Excellent. And as far as big events go, it gets no bigger than the finale of the heavyweight Grand Prix. So, to the light heavyweight champion Ryan Bader, how excited are you, and how prepared are you to face Fedor in the finals? Yeah, I mean it's it's an awesome ex experience. This whole Grand Prix, uh, you know, having a light heavyweight belt and getting asked to come into this Grand Prix. Um, and then, uh, you know, winning these two fights and, and let alone, you know, fighting for the, the heavyweight championship and, and potentially winning two belts, you know, I, I get to, to finish it off with fighting, uh, one of the greatest of all times with Fedor. So, uh, this tournament has been great. I never really had a, a time in my career where I've known my opponents before, you know, that, that fight right in front of you. So, you know, I, I knew I was fighting that trio, you know, then I knew I was fighting, you know, the winner of, uh, uh, Chell and Fedor, and so that's it, it's been uh, uh, an easy, easy goals to see, you know, in front of me as far as like putting the work into training. As you know, you take a fight or whatnot, and you kind of fall off for a month or so, but you don't have that name, you don't have that date yet. So I've been motivated throughout this whole process, and and best shape of my life, feeling great, perfect time for the uh, you know the heavyweight championship fight. Finally, for the last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko. We saw in Bader's fight with Matt Mitrione his ability to neutralize a larger opponent and avoid taking any damage. How do you plan to counter that here in the finals of the Grand Prix? Федор, у него вопрос, что мы видели в предыдущих боях Райан Бейдера, что он очень хорошо умеет нейтрализировать больших соперников, как Мэтт Митрион размером больших. И э, одновременно э, не получать очень много э, э, ударов. Как ты, как ты думаешь, э, ты будешь с этим справляться во время боя? Да, спасибо за вопрос. 
Да, Райан Бейдер очень грамотный боец, наверное, один из самых умных в этом гран-при, а, ну, я имею в виду умных бойцов. То есть он а, очень грамотно ведет свой поединок. Вот. Ну, что мы в бою посмотрим. Я понимаю, что он очень хороший борец и а, очень сложно по нему попасть. То есть он очень много уделяет внимания защите своей. Вот. Ну, посмотрим, как сложится бой. Um... So, you know, he said uh, Ryan Bader is, uh, you know, an exceptional fighter, probably one of the most uh, toughest and skilled guys in this tournament. Um, he knows that he has a very, you know, strong wrestling background, but he also knows that it's not easy to hit Ryan. He's, 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 he's got very good defense and he's very aware of making sure he doesn't get hit. Um, the rest, you know, we'll have to see in a fight. Very good, gentlemen. Thank you all. We look forward to Bellator 214 on the 26th. Okay, our next question comes from the line of Damon Martin with Flowcom.com. Hey, guys, first question for Jake Hager. Uh, Jake, I know as you've been preparing for your Bellator debut, you have been doing some independent dates on the wrestling scene. How have you managed to balance that as you get ready for a fight, you know, and also, you know, continuing to do the pro wrestling stuff on the side? Uh, yeah, it's been uh, kind of a work in progress. Um, when I left WWE in April of 2017, I, I knew I had a lot of meat on the table to capitalize on as far as in the independent wrestling world. Um, so at that point, it was the main focus. Um, and then slowly, um, as we got closer to being ready to step into the cage, the focus, you know, shifts more into the uh, MMA aspect side of it. Um, I think it's uh, been a really cool journey. I definitely would have been ready uh, sooner if I wasn't wrestling on the weekends. But unfortunately, you know, I have to make make my income the way I can. And that was a big part of it um, to capitalize on my TV exposure and continue on doing uh, uh, continue on professional wrestling and entertaining. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I think it will help me, uh, with my MMA career. And so it's almost like practice a little bit too. Yeah. A lot of people like to talk about other professional wrestlers who have come into MMA, but you're your own guy. But I guess the one comparison I might make is a guy like Bobby Lashley, who, you know, was a, a great, you had a, had a very bright future in fighting, but obviously he had a lot of, you know, pull in the pro wrestling world. I guess my question is, have you, have you seen this new promotion start as All Elite Wrestling? And, and, and do you think that you know, a promotion like that would draw you away from, from fighting? Or are you dedicated to fighting now? Or how are you going to do that going forward, especially if a great offer comes in you know, from a pro wrestling organization? Well, first I have to say that Bellator has been absolutely amazing to work with. I think you see that with a lot of fighters gravitating towards this promotion because of the way they treat their talent and how they put on their promotion. Um, so it, I'm already signed with a great organization. Um, as far as AEW and what those guys are doing, I think it's awesome. I think they're changing the landscape of professional wrestling, providing competition for the big dog where they haven't had competition in, in over 20 years. Um, it's only going to make things better for professional wrestlers uh, uh, when promotions like AEW emerge and are successful. And last one for you, Jake, you know, you've seen, you know, the, the attention that's paid on fighters coming in for their first fight. Uh, it's, it's impossible to ignore that. You're on the main card of one of the biggest Bellator cards of the year. Uh, how are you handling that spotlight considering, you know, at the end of the day, this is still your first fight. Yep. 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 I understand that a lot of people are not going to like that. I get to be on this card and then even more people are not going to like what I get paid for being on this card, but that's not my problem. I belong here. Enough said. Awesome. And a couple of questions for Fedor. Uh, first one for Fedor, you participated in some of the most famous Grand Prix in mixed martial arts history and pride. How would you compare the level of competition you faced in Bellator uh, versus what you faced in those days in pride? Fedor, you were in the most famous Grand Prix in your career. Как ты можешь сравнить уровень бойцов в этом Белотеле Гран-при по сравнению с тем, с которыми ты, в которых ты участвовал до этого? 
Ну, это Гран-при, конечно, собрано очень хорошие бойцы. Именитые и бойцы из первой десятки. Поэтому я очень высоко оцениваю это Гран-при. Очень высоко оцениваю. И для меня очень важно, да, очень важно на выступать. Вот, и я рад выступать с такими бойцами, как Райан Вейвер. Вот. А And last question for Fedor. Obviously, Fedor, you've been a part, uh, you've been a champion uh, so much of your career. At this stage of your career, what would it mean to you to become Bellator heavyweight champion? Uh, Fedor, ты, конечно, уже был чемпионом uh, uh, во время своей карьеры. Uh, в этом этапе своей карьеры, что для тебя значит стать uh, тяжелым uh, uh, чемпионом Bellator в тяжелом весе? Очень много значит, очень много значит. Конечно, я выступаю за свою страну, во славу Божию. Вот, поэтому я, конечно, буду, буду укладываться на все сто процентов. Для меня очень многое значит ближайший бой. К тому же я единственный русский, кто участвовал в этом. Uh, it means uh, a lot. It, it means everything. Um, this, this Grand Prix is very important. I fight. I'm fighting for my country. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for not fighting for God, but I'm fighting with you know with God on my mind. And uh, I'm, I'm also the only uh, Russian fighter on this on this in this Grand Prix. So it means everything for me to win it. And, and to to participate in it and I'm gonna give it one hundred percent. Awesome. Thank you so much. Our next question comes from the line of Dan Rausch with Men's Fitness magazine. Hey, I just wanted to ask Fedor Melyanenko, how does it feel to be fighting in a Scott Coker promotion and um after all Scott Coker is uh is the beginning of kind of a new era in in your career as it is. Greatest of all time. Sorry, I didn't hear a word of that because it was cutting in and out. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, I just wanted to ask Fedor, how does it feel to be fighting at this point in his career? How much longer is he going to go? Why is he fighting? Why Bellator? Why now? Got it. Fedor, uh, he wants to ask, at this stage of his career, Почему ты продолжаешь, продолжаешь биться, продолжаешь вступать в эти гран-при? Почему сейчас и почему именно в Белатуре? Ну, я очень благодарен Скотту Кокеру за то, что он включил меня в гран-при. Это человек слова. Во-первых, мне всегда очень приятно было с ним работать. Все годы, которые мы раньше работали и сейчас, я... это человек слова. Это не человек, который пускает свои слова на ветер. Вот, это первое. Почему я выступаю? Я выступаю за свою страну, я выступаю, представляя да, свою веру. Вот. Мне кажется, больше мотивации и причин не должно быть. Uh, it's always been a pleasure to fight for him in the past in Strike Force and, and now here in Bellator. He's not the kind of guy who who uh, uh, makes empty promises. Um, as far as what motivates him to fight, uh, he fights for his country. He fights for his beliefs, and uh, he feels like, what more do you need? What more motivation do you need than that? Well, he's a great warrior, uh, but he's been knocked out a lot recently, and it's obviously hurt him physically, mentally. When does it come to an end? And as being somebody who's been considered the greatest of all time, why is he really fighting now? And when does it come to an end? What is he fighting for? Uh, 
А, что-то, а, у тебя были а, несколько поражений. А, 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 Извините, конечно, связь это... прервалась. Sorry, the connection is lost. Does it like your question? I have lost my... Our, um, Fedor. Fedor. Yeah. yeah. All right, operator, we can go to the next question. Okay. Our next line question comes from the line of Brandy Sipke with MMA Takeover. Hey, uh, this question is for Ryan. Uh, Ryan, back in October, you said you want to defend both the light heavyweight and heavyweight belt. Should you win it? Is that still the plan? Yeah, I'm, we're kind of across that bridge when it comes. You know, I got this fight in front of me, so I don't like to look too far ahead. Um, you know, but I, I will be holding both titles. Um, you know, and I, I, I don't feel like there's a clear cut 205 pounder contender out there. Um, there's a couple in the mix, um, but I don't think really one's separate himself from the rest of the pack there. Um, so. So I don't believe there needs to be, you know, an interim belt or anything like that right away. Um, so it, it, it really will see, you know, I have to go out there and I have to win this fight to have two belts. And so that's my focus right now. I haven't thought too much of it. Yeah. In the perfect world, I'd want to go and defend both and, and, uh, you know, keep them, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when it happens and then kind of go from there. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry, guys. I'm back. I'm here. I'm here. I'm oh. sure. Okay, Fedor is Thank back. You. Thank you, Fedor. Fedor is returned. Okay, um, I have a question for Fedor. Fedor, you said after your last fight you'd requested not to fight Russian opponents. With Vitaly Minakov fighting for the number one contender spot, is there a chance you two would fight? Should you both win your, no your next bouts? А, Федя, ты сказал до этого, что э, твое желание не, не сражаться с э, оппонентами из России, но вот сейчас э, в феврале Виталий Минаков будет сражаться на э, претендента номер один на, тяж, на, на тяжелый вес. Если ты выиграешь гран-при и станешь чемпионом, то как бы неизбежно будет тебе с ним биться. Это, это проблема для тебя? Ну, сначала нужно победить гран-при, а потом уже строить планы. Вот. Я так думаю. Uh, he said, well, for now, I'm just focused on trying to win this Grand Prix, and then we can deal with the rest afterwards. I, I don't want to think too far ahead because, uh, you know, I have a tough opponent in front of me. Okay, great. Thanks. And a quick question for Jake. We know you come from a collegiate wrestling background. But what do you think will surprise fans most about your game when you enter the cage? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, we know you come from a collegiate wrestling background. So what do you think will surprise fans the most about your game when you enter the cage? Um, yeah, great question. Uh, when you look at wrestlers entering the cage, you know, uh, they have great takedowns, that they use the cage, and their conditioning is usually above par. Um, I think uh, what will surprise a lot of people is how hard I hit and how fast I am for a heavyweight. Cool, great. Thank you, everyone. Our next question comes from the line of Eddie Goldman with No Hold Bard. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first question for Ryan. Uh, Ryan, when Fedor was on that amazing 10-year undefeated streak and in his peak, it was around the time that you were still wrestling at Arizona State, becoming an All-American. Did you ever imagine then that you would be going into MMA and eventually facing Fedor? I started thinking about kind of getting into MMA um, around my senior year, you know, uh, wrestling is a grind, you know, and making weight. And we started kind of messing around a little bit too when there was time to cut weight instead of just drilling and wrestling because we did that day in and day out, you know, and I had a, I had a bunch of guys that ended up going to MMA, like King Velasquez, Udala, Aaron Simpson, you know, and I uh, started messing around a little bit. And I, I definitely watched Fedor coming up. But, I, yeah, I, I never really thought 
that we would cross paths, to be honest. You know, it was, uh, it was different promotions at the time. You know, the crowd was a, uh, a far off place in my mind, you know, in, in time. And I just didn't think we'd, we'd kind of cross paths at all. And so, you know, when this tournament came about, you know, we said yes, and we didn't really know who was in it. And then the tournament started filling out a little bit, and you start seeing the legends of the sport start popping up, you know, and then uh, uh, we heard Fedor was in it. You know, and, and, and my plan, obviously, is win the fight in front of me, and, and I kept doing that. And uh, the ultimate, you know, the the cherry on the top would be fighting in the finals for the heavyweight championship in a Grand Prix-style tournament and also facing one of the greatest of all time in Fedor. And so uh, I, I've said in interviews before, when, before this whole thing started, that, that's who I wanted to face in the, the finale. And I just think it, it just, it just uh, puts a stamp on it, you know, and I don't think it would have been – as sweet if it would have been, you know, uh, full fivers, you know, chill in the finals, you know, it, I, I wanted it to be Fedor. I wanted it to be a true heavyweight, you know, let alone he's one of the greatest of all time. So uh, I didn't, to be honest, but uh, I'm glad we're, uh, we're sitting here a week and a half out and fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. Ryan, do you expect this fight to be, more wrestling and grappling or stand up? What do you foresee for, from your standpoint is the best mix of that? Man, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I, I've, I quit doing that earlier in my career. I try to, I try to game plan so much. I try to uh, rehearse it in my head so much that, you know, if anything deviated that from that, what I had in my head, um, you know, it, it put you down the wrong path. And so I'm just kind of open wherever that fight goes, I'm going to be fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been in there uh, a ton. I've been in there with tons of different styles and all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, I can adapt to everything. I can fight entirely uh, on the feet. I can mix it up, you know, fight on the ground, obviously, but, you know, I'm going to go in there and, and use my attributes and mix them all up, you know, keep them guessing and, and use what I do well, you know, and it's just one of those things you never know. You never know what's going to happen. You know, we've seen it in King Mo, went out there, um, hit him with one punch, he went down. With Matt, uh, you know, I kind of came with a, a wrestling, grappling, heavy style to kind of neutralize his length and his, and his reach and, you know, his power. And so, um, yeah, we have a game plan, but, you know, it's a fight, so you never know. And question for Fedor, what do you expect in this fight in terms of the mix of grappling and wrestling and stand up and striking. What what would you think would be the best mix for you? Are you asking what he expects out of Ryan Bader or himself? No, of himself. What he would like would it be more standing or grappling or how, oh, okay. how much? Okay. Got, it. Got it. Got it. Got uh, it. Fedor, как ты видишь бой uh, uh, со своей стороны? Тебе больше uh, подходило бы, если в стойке был бы проходил бы бой или да нет, на самом деле, я думаю, все равно. И, и, и лежа очень много внимания уделяли борьбе, а, стоя с парингом. Поэтому я думаю, как посмотрим, как будет бой. Мне, в принципе, все равно, что стоя, то лежа. Pretty much the same as Ryan. You know, he's been training in, in both the stand-up and the ground, and wherever the fight goes, then that's where it goes. He, he doesn't really carry the way. Our next question comes from the line of Gareth A. Davies. Oh, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everyone. I'm sorry I'm out of breath. I'm running through the streets of London looking for gold. Um, first question for Mr. Scott Coker. Um... Scott, Gareth, what Gareth, does it mean? Gareth, Scott Coker's not on the line. Sorry to... Sorry oh, to okay. Okay. Um, so it was about Fedor. Good afternoon, Fedor. Could I just ask oh. what it would mean mm -hmm. to you at this age, at this stage in your career, to win on January the 26th at the Forum against a very live opponent in Ryan Bader. What it would mean, would it be one of the greatest accomplishments of your career? Федор, он хочет спросить, на этом этапе твоей карьеры, что для тебя значит выиграть этот гран-при, особенно против такого сильного соперника, как Ryan Bader, 
Ты думаешь, это будет одно из самых э, великих достижений твоей карьеры? Да, я думаю, что это одно из э, самых больших будет достижений моей карьеры, если, если у кого даст выиграть. Потому что Райан, конечно, очень серьезный соперник, очень прошел достойных бойцов или еще бойцов, поэтому я, для меня это будет, если я Бог даст победить, для меня это будет большое, большое событие. Um, yeah, this would definitely be, you know, a huge accomplishment uh, for me in my career, uh, especially because of the opponent. You know, Ryan is a, is an exceptional fighter. He's beaten some really tough guys to get to the final. Uh, so for him to win the Grand Prix would be would be a huge accomplishment. Thank you, Fedor. And maybe I could ask Ryan. Danny, is Ryan on? Yeah, man. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Um, Ryan, in, in the same breath, um, would a victory over Fedor for you, when you see what the man's accomplished, how respected he is by fans, fighters, promoters, everyone in the industry, would this be the biggest accomplishment of your life to go out of that arena at the Forum in Inglewood on January the 26th with your arms raised? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I try not to let that get in my head at all, you know, because as a fighter, I kind of, every fight that you have in front of you is your biggest fight. You know, even if it's just a regular little fight, you know, you don't want to lose and take that one step back to your ultimate goal. But, you know, I'm finally here as far as I've kept my head down. I've won these fights. I've had to win. I captured the light heavyweight belt. I entered a heavyweight tournament, you know, and uh, I beat King Mo pretty quickly. And then I fought and beat, you know, one of the guys that, more than likely if the tournament wasn't happening, he'd be fighting for the heavyweight championship. It's Matt Mitrione, you know, and he was undefeated in Bellator. You know, I, I took him out and now I'm standing across from Fedor in the final. So, but like I was saying earlier, it's, it's just, everything just kind of came to fruition and it's the perfect time. Um, this is who I wanted to fight in the finals. I, I didn't want to fight. You know, I, I would and, and uh, you know, go out there and no problem fight Chael if he would have won. But I just feel like this kind of cements it, uh, a little more so, and, and cements my legacy, going out there beating Fedor, you know, and, and uh, he's he's obviously earned every, you know, all that respect, and, and uh, one of the greatest of all times, and so, yeah, I mean, as far as my, as far as my career, this is the biggest moment, you know, having, the, being a two-division champion, and, and, and beating uh, one of the greatest of all, all times. Thank you, Ryan, and finally, one question for the swagger man. Um, um, it's, you know, obviously it's fantastic when such a big character with an amazing name um, who has so many social media followers, who's clearly a star in another realm of combat sports um, and combat sports entertainment comes across to mixed martial arts. Um, do you, how seriously are you taking this? Is it, is it, is it putting your toes in the water? Um, obviously, WWE is a huge sport in a different realm. I mean, how seriously are you after the belt? Do you want to be the champion? Do you want to be fighting the Baders and the Fedors of this world? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to be in the finals of a heavyweight Grand Prix. Um, I think anybody who enters into MMA and is serious about it. Uh, I mean, if you look, I left a giant company making hundreds of thousands of dollars for a chance to cross over into another industry. So big investment on myself and a huge risk as far as career goes. Um, this is, this is very serious for me. This is, this is life. And, you know, nobody loves cash more than I do. And I want more of it. I don't need it all. I just need a lot. Our next question comes from the line of Igor Lazarin. Yeah. Hi there. Uh, I, will, I, I will ask Fyodor Yemelinenko in Russian. Добрый день, Федор. Uh, у меня uh, вопрос такой, как вы оцениваете свой уровень подготовки к поединку с Бейдером и uh, ставите ли вы задачу досрочно победить его и не тянуть все пять раундов? Спасибо. Спасибо. Ну, э, подготовка прошла хорошо, но уровень подготовки можно встретить только во время боя или после него. Ну, но все, слава богу, прошло хорошо. 
Что касается э, досрочной победы, я всегда хочу досрочно победить, а тому же, как Бог дает. Конечно, я, ну, хочется победить э, раньше, вот, и не затягивать бой. Вот, но готовимся всегда, конечно, на полный бой, чтобы еще остались силы после боя. То есть вы допускаете, да. что вы еще после, после этого поединка будете выступать? Посмотрим, как будто надо сначала биться. Благодарю. Угу. Спасибо. So the question was, how does he, uh, how does he feel about his training, and does he want the fight to end quickly or and, and not drag on for five rounds? And the training was great. He feels prepared. And as far as the fight, of course, every fighter wants the fight to end as quickly as possible, but We'll see what happens in the fight. Our next question comes from the line of Jay Wan Pake. Hi, um, Jake. First question is for Jake. Um, Jake, with your experience competing at the highest level possible in the sport, has that made the preparation for your debut a lot easier in terms of dealing with critics and expectations? Uh, you know what? I, I've been wrestling since I was five years old, so absolutely I am relying on that training and that background to help me prepare for this. Uh, I, was never, I had never seen a professional wrestling ring before I started training to become a professional wrestler. I've never, I haven't had an MMA fight, but I don't think that deters me uh, from becoming a professional MMA f uh, fighter. So I think the bright lights and the experience in the entertainment industry has actually helped me and is a huge advantage of mine and will continue to be in my career as an MMA fighter. And I know in the past you said that you were completely different than CM Punk entering the sport, but has watching him go through the journey in the UFC did influence you in a way to enter the sport as well, or was it just a completely independent decision? Completely, completely independent, completely independent. Uh, I first uh, got the bug about the same time Ryan did. We're, uh, we were both in college at the same time, so our junior and senior years. Uh, you know, my teammates at Oklahoma started delving into it. Um, and then back in 2013, uh, an ex-teammate of mine named Matt Grice was fighting for the UFC in Tampa, where I live. And uh, we went to the fight, and from then on, I had the bug. And it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when uh, I crossed over into the MMA world. Got it. Thank you. And uh, one last one for you. When you were looking to get into MMA, was this what you were looking for? Were you looking to jump into the highest level right away, or was it just the opportunity that was presented and you couldn't refuse it? Um, you know what, uh, with my background, I was looking to go to the highest level. Um, I, I, I want to compete. I want to be tested and this is where that's going to happen. And Bellator has been great, uh, to work with. Uh, they have accommodated my independent pro wrestling schedule and training, uh, very well and, uh, uh, have really helped me, uh, you know, as far as the training goes to prepare for this and, and to allow me to wait till I know I'm ready, which is now. Gotcha. Thank you very much, Jake. And just a couple for uh, Ryan. Um, throughout your career, you have been in there with some of the best fighters in the world, but what would, you know, what would mean more to you, beating Fedor or winning that second belt? Well, they kind of coincide here. You know, it, it was just a perfect storm that I happened to be fi facing him in the finals. You know, um, Obviously, it takes a lot of work to win two belts. You know, I got the light heavyweight belt, um, entered this tournament, kept my head down, and got through it. Now I'm facing Fedor. So, um, it, it's uh, yeah, it's a perfect storm for both. You know, I get to win that heavyweight championship, and I get to be one of the greatest to do it. So, um, that combination of both is is really, you know, motivating me. It, it was a goal from the beginning when I saw he was on the other side of the bracket, hoping he would get there, and, and here we are. And uh, you said that there's a, a real clear contender in the lightweight division, or light heavyweight division, I'm sorry. Um, and recently, Leona Machida did sign for Bellator, and you guys do have a little bit of a history. Now, that was way back in your career, but is that a spot you would like to run back at, you know, any time in the future? Yeah, hell yeah. You know, he's, he's one of those uh, 
you know, uh, not good highlights for me when you know, they're, they're showing him, you know, and I'm rushing in, getting knocked out. I had no idea what the hell I was doing back then, um, striking wise, but, um, you know, and, and I can't even remember how many years that was, but I definitely would like to get that back. And it's a big fight and I, I'm looking to you know, get into these big fights. You know, I have one in front of me here. Um, we'll see what happens and see, kind of see where we go from here. Um, but that's a fight I definitely want. Next question comes from the line of Stephen Morocco. Once again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Hey, Ryan, speaking of fights that you want, um, do you have a, a list or, you know, any sort of idea of, of, of free agents you'd like Bellator to sign? Um, man, I haven't really thought too much, too much about it. Um, you know, the, I don't feel the UFC's light heavyweight division is very, uh, very deep at all. I, I think there's a handful of guys, you know, that, you know, they keep kind of regurgitating guys fighting for the belt and whatnot. Um, you know, so there's really not too many you can pull from there. Yeah. There's, uh, there's always guys out there floating around, but I, I haven't really even thought about it too much. Um, you know, Bellator is doing a great job at attracting these, these guys, these high level guys. And, and that's going to come, you know, with just a little bit of time and the word is getting out, you know, we're treated well over here. You know, we have opportunities, um, for example, being able to, to fight in this grand prix, you know, we saw Darion Caldwell go out and fight in, in Japan and all that kind of good stuff. And so, um, that's attractive to us and, and, uh, you're going to see more guys kind of kind of coming over and uh you know that'll fill out the ranks when you observe uh fighters sort of on the outs or you know take a dip in their career or other you know circumstances that uh perhaps make them more likely to defect is is that something you you hope for as as a competitor to see them migrate over to Bellator so you can you can be able to face them, have that sort of competition? Um, not exactly. I'm kind of just doing my own thing. You know, uh, there's always guys to fight and there, there's always tough guys in front of you. And so I don't think too much about that. Um, you know, one thing is, you know, it, uh, definitely a goal for the company is to keep growing, you know, and, and attracting those higher level names will help that and help you get more eyeballs at, at these fights and, and, uh, you know, a Bellator brand, which ups your brand, that whole thing. And so, um, and as a competitor, you know, um, you want to compete against the best, you know, no, but like I said, there's no shortage of, of tough guys in front of me, you know, I'm fighting, you know, the pinnacle right now, I'm fighting Fedor for the heavyweight championship of the world. So pretty occupied thinking about that, you know, and then, uh, you know, and, and being a two division champion, you know, that's, that's the pinnacle of the sport right there, you know, and everything after that is kind of gravy. It's just fun. You know, and so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to going out there, competing against Fedor, you know, getting that second belt, and then uh, and then just being free and fighting wherever and and uh, fighting these big fights. I think I've asked you this before, but uh, you know, maybe your answer will be different now that you've had a, a chance to go through this tournament. Do you have any idea of what the balance is going to be, but between you fighting at light heavyweight and you being at the heavyweight? Yeah, no idea yet. We haven't really. Uh, I didn't do it yet. You know, at it, it, the beginning, you know, I kind of said I wanted to send both belts. Um, we'll see though. We'll see, you know, I gotta, I gotta win both belts first, you know? And so if I do go out there and do that and, and it's one of those things that we get with belts or we get a game plan going, what's best for us, what's best for them, you know, and, uh, kind of go forward from there. You know, it's gotta make sense for me. Um, and I gotta be incentivized to, to stay here and, and fight, Big, big old boys all the time, you know? Um, so, yeah, we'll get with Bellator and we'll kind of go from there. Gotcha. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sasha Mox. Hi, everyone. Uh, first question would be to Jake, a.k.a. Jack Swagger. First question, man, is what made you choose to pursue mixed martial arts after such an illustrious WWE career? Uh, opportunity, uh, the opportunity to make money for my family and the opportunity to, uh, cross promote and the opportunity to, uh, expand the Jack Swagger brand, Jake Hager brand. Um, you know, I've been wrestling since I was five years old. I, uh, I relate a lot of MMA to that same love I have for wrestling. Um, 
I'm the type of guy that just needs to, uh, to that needs to compete. And I think it was uh, obvious in my departure from the WWE that it was just time for me to leave and uh, go on to the next venture um, in uh, in my life. But I mean, simple answer is I'm here to make money. Perfect. Now, Jack, you're competing. You're making your debut at the age of 36, uh, but you've competed your whole life. You wrestled when you were five, you competed in WWE. Do you think your age is a factor at this stage co- continuing or starting your mixed martial arts career? Maybe 10 years ago, it would have been a factor, but I think the advances in technology and sports nutrition and science has uh, come a long way in that 10 years. So it's just a matter of being smart, having a high fight intelligence, have a high training intelligence and having uh, great guys around you that understand uh, what type of fighter you are and how you need to train and prepare. Uh, If that means not going so hard on some days to get a little bit more recovery, or that might also mean push it a little bit further when you're tired because you need it because of the age. Either way, I think there's so much, um, advances in sports nutrition that it really neutralizes uh, the the playing ground uh, for older fighters. Yes, I'm late to the party, but you're going to find out that I am the party. Better late than never. My last question is, obviously, there's been previous WWE superstars who've made a transition into MMA, but one that obviously stands out is Brock Lesnar. Now, besides the similarity between you both having prestigious wrestling backgrounds, do you draw any other similarities between yourself and Brock Lesnar? Um, We both have big teeth and no necks. Is that a similarity? (laughs) (laughs) That's a perfect one. I mean, you know, what Brock did uh, was incredible. It, uh, he, he raised the bar to uh, new heights, to something that a lot of people didn't think would ever happen, have entertainers cross over into this highly competitive, highly uh, physical uh, industry. It's the toughest sport in the world, bar none. Uh, before I started training for MMA, I was like, oh, I'm a, I've wrestled all my life. I know how to train hard. No. MMA training is way harder than wrestling, and uh, it has proven that over the last year and a half. Um, If I can make some comparisons to myself and Brock, I would say very similar wrestling. Uh, He might have a edge on that, but I think my hands are better. Our last question comes from the line of Randall Folk. Yeah, my question is for Ryan Bader. Um, Ryan, I know you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would becoming Bellator's first two division champ, simultaneous two division champ, mean to you? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a kind of a lifetime of work, you know, coming to a head there. You know, I've been wrestling since I was seven years old. You know, on the kind of year round circuit. You know, I played football. I was a good football player also, but wrestling was kind of that main sport, and, and uh, wrestled all the way through college, a couple time All American, and then. I, I, I thought I wanted to be done being an athlete, you know, so uh, I took a couple months off and I immediately missed it. I missed that competing. I missed that fire. I missed that having that goal and working towards something, you know, and so uh, got in, into MMA, you know, and uh, um, it, it just doesn't get any bigger than this moment. And like I said on some other questions, you know, it would, it would have been different if I'm, I was fighting, you know, uh, like a Chelsea Sonnen or something like that in the finals. You know, this is just, it was a perfect storm. You know, it's a true heavyweight, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. I'm, I'm, I'm going for a second belt, fighting in a Grand Prix style tournament, which Fedor kind of made his name and uh, came up on, you know, and uh, I get to face face him in the finals and, and uh, potentially beat him and hold two belts, you know. So, like I said, it doesn't get any bigger. It's the pinnacle of the sport right here, and, and uh, um, that doesn't mean I'm done at all. It just means everything else after that, man. I just go, get to go out there and have fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I don't need any motivation anyways, but um, what more, more motivation do you need than uh, facing him and potentially becoming a two-division champion? And then my last question would be for you. Um, would you be open to Bellator in the future doing a 205-pound uh, tournament style for a, maybe a number one contender or possibly you being in the tournament for your light heavyweight title? 
Um, yeah, like I said, it was a, there's not a, a ton of clear cut contenders right now. Um, you know, there's a couple that I have in my mind, but you know, it's one those things where you know I did this heavyweight. I would rather you know them duke it out and get a contender out of it, and then I can face that winner. To be honest. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Just wanted to wrap this call up by saying thank you to all the fighters and the media that joined us today. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you out at the forum next next Saturday, January 26th. Thank you. See you soon.